from the Art of Flight. Please welcome Mark McMorris! Yeah, man. Thank you, Steve. Welcome back. Thanks. How are you? How are you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. You're feeling good? A little sweaty. You're excited about this? You're, you're getting ready to go back? Yeah, I'm very excited. So we obviously February we'll all be watching. It's exciting in the Olympics, but just up to that, you have the X Games as well. And so, how close is the X Games performance to the Olympics? Yeah, X Games are a week out from Russia, so it'll be competing there, getting on a plane, and going and trying to get on the right time zone. Is that a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, because uh, X Games is sort of when you see the best riding, and if I'm not there to perfect my riding, I think it could hurt me, and um, it's, a, it's always treated me well, that contest, and to leave on a good note to Russia would be nice. Do you guys know your own limit? Because as any sport progresses, especially with the skateboarding world and the half pipes and snowboards, one thing we talked to Stacy Peralta about is that guys used to skateboard in pools, but then when they understood the jumps, they started to change the ramps, so the ramps could allow them to go bigger than some of the older guys would be able to do, or the older girls. So that now, we're the spectacle culture. We want big, bang, and you know, you're 14, we want all that. That at some point, you're like, the human body can't take that landing. Yeah. Um, that's why we have hospitals, I guess. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah, that sucks though, bro. It, it truthfully does suck. But um, that's part of the game. If you get hurt, you just want to get back to it even more. It's a, it's a weird addiction, but it's just the way it is. You know, listen, that, that drive and that desire to be a part of a sport, regardless of the conditions, have been a part of his whole life. Take a look at this one here. It's a sport usually reserved for the mountains, or at least a good-sized hill. But a strip mall parking lot in East Regina worked just fine, thank you, for these young snowboarders. A temperature in the minus 20s with a biting wind chill wasn't enough to deter boarders or the curious. Like the cold weather? Oh. I just like the snowboard, and I don't care what weather it is. Holy mackerel. That's him. Was that 2003, February of 03? That was you. <laughs> you were I, so determined then. Yeah, it looked like I just came out of the womb. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can't believe that exists, that footage. That is insane. Um, I remember that day. That was a really cold day, and that was the first time I ever competed. And to do it, like, where people were watching, it just, like, made... Like, when there is an atmosphere like that, you just want to go even harder. And right. when the pressure's on, you want it more. And I understand why I do what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> why do you think, do you have any idea as to why you, like, you and a lot of your competitors, in that high-pressure situation as kids, a lot of kids would just kind of shy away and don't want that attention. But what do you think it is about you that you wanted it? You wanted to perform more. Yeah, I think pressure can be taken in in two different ways. And um, some of the best competitors don't even take it in the best way. Or some of the best snowboarders don't take pressure well. But you can see the ones that do. And it's this like will to want to land. Or I don't know what it is if we try that much harder when it matters. But you can either like fuel off of it or go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And I hope it continues to fuel me. Speaking of fuel and fueling yourself, um, you got a TV show with your brother, right? Which is awesome. Your brother wanted to weigh in for a second here. Can we hear from him? Uh, it's your older, better looking brother, Craig, here. I was just wondering, seeing as all you eat is quinoa, burgers, lentil milkshakes, and uh, pieces of lettuce for dinner, breakfast, and lunch, um, I was just wondering, what are you going to eat in Russia? Because all they eat is horse meat and bears. So I was just concerned about your health, and uh, yeah, what are you gonna eat? <laughs> what am I gonna eat? Yeah. yeah. Have you thought about? I mean, Russia is such a different place, man. Yeah, I've been to Moscow once, and I thought I was for sure gonna die on the roads. Yeah. First of all, and then they gave me a nice little fur hat that was nice of them <laughs> um, does it have a red bull logo on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It does not. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think the Canadian team, I think the plan is they will like bring in food and stuff, but it's going to be crazy to see like, it's going to be a different, different atmosphere. Um, I heard that you have to like sh show your credentials every 15 feet there, and all the guards are like standing with guns. <laughs> it's gonna be gnarly, but it's the Olympics. <laughs> They'll make it happen. Aside from the fact that you're you're a nice guy and you're like, and it's good to be around you, but the X Games culture has really changed or showed the rest of the world. Hey, athletes can have personalities. Hey, athletes can be showy. Athletes can even brag. You know, because in Canada, especially hockey culture, right? We don't we don't like it. If an athlete brags on Coach's Corner, they're going to get smoked the next Saturday, right? Yeah, that's true. But you guys have been able to change that. Where, do you th where does that come from? Yeah, I hope we're not bragging, um, but I think it's Oh, well, just... you left it went after Sean White. There was yeah. an element of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it felt good, but... Um, <laughs> but um, I think to get to where we are in our sport, it's not necessarily such an organized thing. Like, you go to the WHL, and you don't need to have a personality to make it to the NHL. You just need to be damn good at hockey. But in our sport, you need to have a personality. You need to be able to interact with people to work your way up and get endorsements to allow you to do the things you want to do. So I think my parents and my brother and all my friends have just and me traveling the world has improved my social skills to a level where I can interact with anybody and mm -hmm. um, carry on a conversation. That's really important. And that's been so cool about the MTV show now. The, the whole world, course. yeah, will get to like see what it's, it's like behind the scenes and not necessarily just the serious side. And it'll be fun and exciting and getting into trouble on the road. And, Getting on a plane to Europe with five of my best friends is scary stuff. <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's, it's actually it's a good lesson because a lot of people watch TV now, and much music and MTV played a role. It was more relatable, but it's beneficial to have friends that you can aspire to be like, right? Exactly. Is that where you met Terry? Terry, yeah. Yeah, Terry was like one of the great, you know, competitors. Yeah, he's pretty much accomplished as much as you can in snowboarding, um, and I really respect him because. He's 40 and still charges down the biggest mountains in the world because he takes care of his body. That's it. Oh, because he's 40, because he takes care of his body. <laughs> is that what I have to look forward to? <laughs> Wait, I'm 41. Um, the, OK, you're still hanging out with Coco, right? Yeah. She's a surfer. Yeah. The, the fundamental, I'm sure there's a lot of like board similarities, but the fundamental difference as opposed to charging down a hill and taking the snow, as opposed to surfing, so much of it is way more Buddhist and way more waiting. Yeah, it is just a logistical nightmare out it, there. <laughs> Knowing the, the ways of the ocean is so hard, and it's a totally different sport, but when you get to stand up and you don't have to be all bundled up, yeah. and you can dive back in the water and it's warm and there's sand, and it's pretty nice <laughs> it's out nice. there. It's pretty nice. How good are you up there? Um, I can hold my own, but I'm very, very, it's funny. I can look at a zillion foot mountain and be like, oh, that looks fun. And then I see like a six foot wave roll and I'm like, oh, that looks scary. <laughs> I think it's awesome what you're pulling off. And I know that uh, we're all really excited for you both, not just the Olympics, but to a whole generation, the X Games is as important. So uh, congrats on everything. Cool. Man. Thank you, George. I'm Martin Ward, 2014 Olympic Games in Sochi, February 7th, right here on CBC. We'll be right back.